It's a municipal court today. I gotta go on to see what happens if they drop my charges or what. I'm here for court today. Okay, come on in. Hey. Your name? Joey Perez. Let's get your temperature. Have you been feeling feverish? You have a cough, shortness of breath, or been in contact with anybody with COVID? No. Yeah, no. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Appreciate that. It's it, it's just a camera, oh, okay. and then and then I have a microphone on the top of it with a little flashlight. Yes, ma'am. I uh, basically go around. And I filmed the police. I started a YouTube channel, and I go around film the police and things like that. It's Bully Back Audits. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just I go around keeping the laws accountable because too many times they try to violate people's rights. Have they tried to stop you for coming in? Oh, well, yeah, I've been I've been assaulted at the post office. Yesterday in Carpus Cove, uh, they tried to arrest me over there, but the police came and took care of things over there. Uh, you go around with cameras, people freak out, believe it or not, even though there's cameras all over the buildings yeah, and stuff like that. These cameras can be changed. They can take, they can delete Mm-hmm, exactly. And plus, you got to FOIA to request all this yeah. stuff, and it takes a long time. Mm-hmm, yep. Interesting times. Were you at the festival the other day? I think I saw you. Yeah, I was over there filming a, a car crash. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah and today when I, and they were going to tow that lady's car off, but because I was there, they you know, and I was telling them they time they, they let well she was there, she had a wreck, she just lived up the road, and they wanted to tow her car off, but because I was videoing there and telling them that they can file a complaint if they have any issues with okay. them, they they let her take a car home. And just a while ago, when I was on my way up here, the highway patrolman had someone pulled over at the, uh, the mini mart in Belton and had the car all searched and everything, looking for drugs, and they found a little scale or whatever. But because I was there video, and they gave him a ticket, speeding ticket, and let him go. Well, it was. Yeah, at the most. It's, yeah, you know, scales, you know. Right, right. And most people don't even know that, exactly. Yes, ma'am. Very true. Did they? Oh, yeah. I'm new here in Tampa, but I've been practicing 32 years. So I do a lot of you know, federal crime, you know, what the special prosecutor for juvenile, I've been a special litigator for CPS, and I've worked in almost every state agency. I've been on my own, and so I do a lot of different things. I've sued the Department of Justice, I've sued my state. <laughs> you know, I've done a lot of Wow. Things. And I'm just like, okay, I'm 64 now. Maybe I should, I should ease up on some things, but it's not me. You know what I'm saying? It's until, a, until I can, until I die, I have to, somebody has to. Uh, stand up for what's right. It is a battle, and it, it's, it's it's stressful to try to go against, you know, the man, if you will. But and you have a lot of retaliation. They'll come by your house in the mornings and flash your house up and stuff like that. So it's just part of it, you know. But yeah, it's someone's got to do it. People Mm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Sir? Yes, sir. If they get stuck, I might know some sign on you. Okay, I'll let them know. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
just like the hands of this man, like how could they should provide even while under the code being interpreted? Because it, anybody that doesn't speak the language or whatever the court room is listening to, you gotta have an interpreter. Mm. I've seen videos of a guy going, he's blind, and he wanted to go in with his iPhone to the courtroom because it shows him where, like, it'll tell him there's a chair in front of him or something like that. And they arrested him and took him to jail because he was trying to go in there with the phone. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. There's a big disconnection between the police and the community. That's a lot of the reasons why it is they, they keep this. I understand they have some, uh, some you know, tough situations, but you got to remember that not every civilian that you come across is going to be a criminal or, you know, you have to remember to de escalate right, them. First, just need to let you know we are in pre trial, okay? You cannot go in there until Mr. M uh, Mr. Uh, Magana gets here. Okay. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. He will not see you without your attorney. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't like the ID. I, I'm the one that saw him at the car wreck. I asked him for his ID and name and badge number. He wouldn't give it to me. So, and and that's a small. He's one of those. Uh, he's also one of the ones that's always been taking pictures. Mm -hmm. One of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's little the small things. That's how you can really test them. Because most people, when you meet somebody, say, "Hey, how you doing?" You introduce yourself. I mean, if you do that to normal people on the street as an officer, you're supposed to be have a higher standard, you know. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be no issue for them to identify themselves or be videoed, you know, transparency and all that, you know. Like sometimes I, I look at it like that, but I used to work at, a, when I was an undergraduate at UT Austin, mm -hmm. I worked at the police department. And I started off like in the record, then I became a supervisor, then I was at the back counter when the officers went out. And I got to see officers shot. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people that I worked with that were wounded or killed. Yeah. Because the, at least in that in Austin, the police department was right on the black part of town, you know, the east part of, right across the street almost, just a couple of streets. And so people already had bad perceptions, mm -hmm. prior cases, brutality, or, you know, not getting responses. And so they didn't have a relationship other than that. And people come sometimes from a position of how they've been treated. Mm -hmm. And the only way to change it is both sides have to be willing to change. Yep. You know, because prejudice means I'm prejudging you. Mm -hmm. That's what kills us. Mm -hmm. I can't look at you and the color of your skin or what you're wearing or what you are and judge who your character is. Because mm -hmm. that's not an indication. Yeah. And we do that. We do it all the time. Everybody. It's true. Law enforcement, us, everybody. We look at somebody and we, we, think we decide who they are without knowing them. Mm -hmm. I wish we could get rid of that. Yeah, it's like with a lot of people that comment on my videos, they always say, man, you went too easy on that cop. You went too easy. But I was like, man, if I just cuss them out, you know, you're not, not gonna you it's not going to fix anything with no. this. It's supposed to be a little bit of step by step, you know? And you got to remain calm. Mm -hmm. You got to remain calm and rational. Mm -hmm. People get labeled some kind of person that they're not going to even regard as making an impact. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, he may have been. A, he may have been injured in the military, yeah, some close to a frag or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he can. He can rip me really good. He had that same thing. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's sad. Oh, this time of the military. I, I thought I was going to go to the uh, Air Force when I was in high school. You know how they could get you to take the test, mm -hmm. but my dad was in the Air Force, and so I was all excited. And I went and told him I was going to go to the Air Force. He goes, No. I said, well, what's, what's wrong with me going to the, to the Air Force? He said, well, first of all, you don't take orders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said that if somebody told me to go do this, I would be the one that said, 
oh, that sounds good, but I wouldn't do it like that. What I would do is this. So he said, that wouldn't be good. So then when I finished law school, they, they were talking about me going to the CIA and working undercover. He goes, no. I said, what's wrong with that? He said, you call your mother every day, and the first thing you do is say, Mom, I'm undercover over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you got to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> so I go, okay, I'm misfit. <laughs> Then there was two. <laughs> 